So the primary issue I mentioned at the start was that it won't accept normal key input. It needs every single one held down, waiting for a short moment and releasing. So my first command for choosing which order, I say serve customer item order or number, followed by a number from 1 to 10. It doesn't care about the first variable term here, it just matters about the number, and that's the one it holds down and releases. Enter, send, and yes, do that with enter, space, and next page, do that when it comes to reading various dialogue and tutorial things. Escape, pause, and menu, press escape. This set of commands I didn't use, but I had them there because they were needed earlier in the development. It's basically the same thing as I had in Words for Evil, where I declare a variable which can be any letter of the alphabet, and then when I say spell, followed by sequences of letters from the alphabet, or just a sequence of letters as is, then one at a time it will hold down one, wait a moment and release, then wait a moment, hold down the next one, wait a moment, release it, wait a moment, and so on. I have 50 in here, 50 and 15 doesn't really make a difference. I should probably change those, but given that's saving fractions of a second when I'm not fast enough on the scale of seconds, I'm not really bothered about that right now. As in words for evil, I declared the same for the phonetic alphabet. So each phonetic letter is held down, waited a moment, and released. And as it sometimes confuses delta with tilde, tilde activates the letter D. I have home activating the letter O because O got confused with home. That's probably just to prevent me saying home by accident, but maybe I should get rid of the line. Now here a cunning trick came about. Like in Words for Evil, I declare a variable alt, which can be any letter from the phonetic alphabet. Prefixed with spell, as an option, I say any sequence of phonetic letters, and then it runs here command on the first variable term, waits a moment, runs here command on the second variable term, and so on, until it's done the last one. Here command will run what's ever in these brackets as if you spoke it, and whatever's in these brackets is going to be a phonetic letter, and so it will run whatever you put up here. So I think there are going to be some interesting use cases for this in the future, where you have a number of actions that you might want to do in literally any order. You predefine what each of them do, even though the keys don't actually have to have anything in common. Then you declare a variable consisting of all the action phrases you might want to use, then have the variable offered many times, and use here command on each of them. And every time, here command will run the actions up here. For the cursor keys, I similarly declared a variable called direction, which can be left, right, up, or down. And as with the other things above, I say any sequence of these, and it will hold, wait a moment, and release them as appropriate. I possibly could have made this tidier, like I did here, by just using here command, and I may use that in future. For the mouse movements, I did have commands prefixed with mouse, but I got a bit annoyed by them, having to say mouse so many times because it was hard to move around. Also there were times when I needed to press the cursor keys a bunch of times, so I lazily decided to combine them. So now if I say a number followed by left, or left followed by a number, it will first move the cursor left 27 pixels times that number. 27 is just a number from the last time I copied this. I should probably change it. But it moves that number of pixels, and then holds down and releases the left arrow key that number of times. I'm hoping this won't create a conflict. Thus far, all the environments in which I've needed to click on things with the mouse specifically don't care what I'm doing with the keyboard, and while there are times when I needed to press the cursor keys a fixed number of times, like in the drinks orders, in those environments it doesn't matter what I'm doing with the mouse, so while the cursor might have been moving around on the screen pointlessly, it means in both cases I'm able to do the command I want to do with the fewest possible words, and I'm not having to say mouse or arrow key dozens of times. Finally, the clicks. The click from the color 3 wasn't recognized, but holding it down and releasing it did work.
and you do need commands for picking up and dropping by holding and releasing specifically. So as said, this is a good set of commands for having a go at the game. It's not enough to play it well. For that I'm definitely going to need some more natural language commands, and more automated actions for things like the trash and the dishwashing, and particularly the flushing. All this code is going to be in the first comment, not the description, because YouTube recently decided it doesn't like angle brackets in its descriptions. When I have a much better set of commands for this, I'll make another video with the updated code.